Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, uh, we've got this lovely class 55 Deltic named the Fife and Forfar Yarn Manri. I'm trying to pronounce that properly. Um, this is made by Lima. Now, a lot of you are gonna find this loco very familiar. Uh, it's kind of like how you'd probably start off with Lima, uh, well, Engage in general. Um, this was probably one of the first diesels I, I made. Oh, well, not made, I bought when I was getting into the hobby, uh, which surprisingly wasn't that long ago. Um, now, I've just picked up things over the years. Uh, now, this loco is a bit different to everything else that you would have seen in the videos. Um, Lima's not my favourite. Um, my favourites are, are mixed between Grain Farish and Dapol. Uh, mainly Dapol because of the details. Now, actually, looking at the proportions of this loco, they look really nice, don't they? Um, and in fact, what I'll do in a minute is I'll just put a Graham Farish class twenty, uh, class fifty-five next to this, just so you can see the size comparison. But this me the video is mainly going to be about how you open the the uh, loco up. And um, this one, I think it's just a bad, it's just a poor runner. So I'm just going to clean it up and basically service it in, in a way. I'm just going to clean everything up. And then we're going to try it around the track and see if we've improved it or not. So it will give you familiarization with what's inside the loco and what things to look for when you're cleaning it, really. Um, I'll just go, go and grab the, the Grain Farish one just for comparison so you can see. Okay, so here you go. This is made by Graham Farish, and it's not every day you get to see these both side by side, and it's just by pure chance that this is happening, by the way. They're both named the same as well, which is quite cool. Um, you can see straight away, let me just move this back, you see the height difference there? There's quite a bit of difference there, isn't there? Sorry about the camera work, guys, I'm still learning. Um, so I just wanted to show you this, um, the length as well of both locos is actually about the same. So it's almost like Lima got it wrong a little bit, they scaled it up too much. And then Graham Farish, it's size wise, scale wise, it's about, it's about right, but there's just something that's not quite right with it. I mean, to me, the front of that looks better. I'm not going to get into a debate with this, but it's a shame there's not like an in-between model that someone makes that's like that size, but looks like that, if that makes sense. So yeah, there's a the size comparison. Um, now the only troubles I've had uh, would, well, and even you might have, are things like stations, station platforms, or um, if there's anything close to the side of the track. The other one could potentially be um, bridges and tunnels. So just bear that in mind if you did want to go this route. Um, you, you'll find that Graham Farish coaches and Lima coaches are more the height of this. Um, and the the Lima version here kind of dwarfs the carriages quite a bit. Now when I first initially got this, I thought that the 55 was a bit of a big boy just so that the guys could look over the coaches in real life. That's not how they are. So... I'm not trying to slate it in any way, shape or form because it holds to its own. If you have that on a layout on its own and maybe had, I don't know, some um, larger coaches maybe or something, I don't know, maybe some T gauge sized coaches, um, <laughs> it's it looks it looks good, um, but it's just, uh, it just seems a little bit out of place with some of the other stuff in the N-gauge world. Anyway, this video isn't really about that. I just wanted to show you the size comparison, and you can make up your own mind. There's, a, you know, there's a price difference between Graham Farish and Lima, and all that sort of stuff. What we're going to do, we're going to take it to the track, and we're just going to see what it's doing, what it's not doing, and um, then we'll get into it and pull it apart, clean it up, put it back together, and we'll see what we got. So let's go over to the test track. Okay then, so we're back at the test track, and actually in the background you'll see um, the the two locos that um, my missus acquired from Tings this year. Um, so, uh, spoiler alert, I have fixed them, uh, but they'll be in future videos. Uh, I'm not gonna release them just yet. Uh, I've got a few other things to show you in the meantime, but um, that's your little taster if you like. Um, what we got, so I've put it on the track. I, I don't know what it's gonna do. So it's on DC, I know that for a fact. And uh, let's just try it, see what it does and what it doesn't do. Okay. Just... Mm. 
unten. Hey, it's not... It's not... <laughs> it's not terrible. Uh, but I know it can be better. I'm just trying to give it a heave-ho. Come on, mate. Yeah, okay, so I think we've got a bit of a pickup issue. It sounds like all the others. Yes. I mean, I could. Okay, it's, oh, it's getting better. Yeah, no, okay, it's, it's died up at the end of the track. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start tearing it apart and I'll, I'll just show you what's involved. Um, to me, it's, it's jerking around a little bit on the track, so I think it needs somewhat of a clean. Um, I could probably just keep running this round until it's kind of moved all the sludge and bits and bobs out of the way of the contact, but that's not the best way of doing it. You'll get instant um, positive results if you just do what I'm going to do in a minute, and it generally it should save you time overall just doing what I'm going to show you. Um, which is just going to clean all this. I'm just going to clean all the stuff up, guys. Um, so we'll take, <laughs> I'm going to get it, and then we'll take it to the, uh, it's the same bench, it's just further down. We'll take it apart and um, clean her up. Okay, so we're over at my little workbench, and the first thing I like to do is just get the shell off. So getting the shell off uh, is, is just the case. There's one, two, three, four lugs. Now, I'll, I'll just pull it off, but... Um, what you can do, I go through a lot of cocktail sticks, they're very handy. Let's yeah, just get some cocktail sticks in there. That should be one side. Yep, okay, so just be gentle here. And you'll see in a minute, these are very different inside than the Graham Farish and Dapple equivalents would be. And I think probably what that Lima did with their locos was they had a power unit and they just generalized it across them. So you've got your cocktail sticks in there and then the shell will just lift off, okay? There's uh, the windows plastic inside the shell. Sometimes it will come out, but it hasn't. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna put it to one side so it's safe because we're not messing with the shell here. And as far as I'm aware, it can go either way on the loco. I don't see any reason why it can't. Um, offhand, so what would be better is you just remember which way it came off. Now you could put a little pen mark inside saying F for front or you know I'd like to de depict that the motor would be at the back but purely up to you on that what you want to do. Um, if, it, if it's harder for me to put on one way than the other then that's what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll just turn the shell round and put it on the other way. So then what we've got in here um, I'm spotting one weird thing. It looks to me like a capacitor. No, resistor. Which is bizarre. This thing here. Uh, I don't think that's normally on them. And I'm just going to try and get the camera to focus better than this. So you can see it too. This little chunky block thing there. Just ignore that. Because I'm probably going to remove it from this. Uh, 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 so what I need to do is take the front and rear off. I think ideally what you're going to want is probably a soldering iron, guys, um, because that's the best way of doing this. Now you can cut the wires and um, then re-solder them on, which is what I'm going to do. Now take note that the right hand here, this this pickup. This one here is going to that rear most pickup there, and that's for you, that's for you really. In case you your wires are back to front, it doesn't really matter. I don't think I'm keeping the wire for later, but I've cut it so it's clean to use later when I resolder it on. I suspect you can probably take this apart without doing what I'm doing. I just want to do a good job, so that's those two there. Because when I resolder them on, they'll be good wires then. And we're left with these bits here. Okay, so um, flat headed screwdriver, there's a flat headed screw there. Like that. Let's take these two screws out. Now, 
the wheels, um, there's an insulator piece here and it isn't there. So the axle and that half of the wheel are going to be one polarity and then just the wheel on this side is going to be the other. Now it doesn't actually matter in this loco how that, whether you put the wheel in this way or that way because everything's plastic that's holding the wheel. However, in some locos it would matter and it would short out. So just best, pres best pra practice is just to remember which way these go in and come out, you know. When you take them out, that's normally how they go back in, but you can use this video as reference. So I'm just putting them to one side, and I think it's at this point now. What I'm going to do is get this, these wires off because they're, they kind of need to be off now. So that's one. And there's going to be a spring in here. See it just there? So we're going to put that to one side in the spring and then I'll remove the wire on this other piece and do exactly the same. You know, there's quite a lot of lo space in these locos, so it's very easy to potentially, well, add sound if you wanted to. Uh, but that's that's it to get these bits out and these and the wheels are really what I'm interested in. As far as this goes, it's, it's pretty happy. Um, the coupling's not broken. It's sprung, it works. So we're going to leave that and put it to one side. It looks it looks quite clean actually to me. So I'm going to leave that. So at the moment I'm going to clean the wheels and put the springs to one side. The, the rear is much the same. There's two screws front and aft or forward and aft. That will come off just like that. There's a bit of grease in the bottom. I'll just wipe that out when it comes to it. And the whole lot look just comes out like that. So we've got our chassis, which weighs an absolute ton. Um, I'll leave that to the side. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not going to worry about the wheels for the minute because I don't think that's necessarily needed. For most people here, um, you just want a clean loco that will run well. Now, I'm not going to pull these wheels apart. Now, if you want to, you can get yourself a pinion puller and pull them apart. I don't feel like it's needed for what I'm going to do. But what I will do, though, is show you how to take the motor apart. <clears throat> so... What you've effectively got is a positive and negative of the motor. It doesn't matter. If you swap them around, the motor will go the other way. That's what they are doing. Now, don't look at this because I don't think this is normally on them. I'm probably just looking at this. Uh, I think what this is is a noise suppressing capacitor. However, it's got... It is... It is a noise suppressing capacitor, but I'm going to remove it. I don't need it on there. So, so far we've got the front bogey pickups and wheels to clean up. The rest of it can go to one side. The rear bogey with its two screws, that can go actually here. I'll put the screws over here. I'm just going to... In the bottom of there, can you just see the remnants of oil? That's I'll just be wiping that out. I'm not going to degrease this because it actually genuine. It generally looks pretty clean. It's just that that I want to clean out. So that will go to the one side, but I will wipe that. Going to leave the wheels. There's a bit of a dent in one of them, but that's okay. I'll leave it. What I want to do is start taking the motor apart. Now, the first thing you want to do here is you'll see that there's these kind of springs. Now these are, these are sprung to hold the brushes in. So what I'm going to do here, it is quite tricky this. So I'm gonna just lift the, this, this off to one side. Okay, and that one as well. And I'm gonna tip it up and there's, there's two br brushes there and they should fall out. Yeah, those two there. Now those need cleaning, okay, because there'll be some graphite or carbon buildup on them. The next thing to do is on here, I'm going to pinch one end and hopefully it doesn't spring in my eye. And they come off like this. I'm hoping you saw that. It's a bit fiddly, so I ain't going to do a lot with those. And this one as well, so I'll just show you again. I'm pinching it. I'm pushing it. It comes off halfway, and it'll come off there. Okay, so we've got a free-to-turn motor, effectively. 
next thing is on the back here which I don't think that's clipped in you've got to push you just got to slightly alleviate it from there and it will you lift it up and it should slide it, it should slide out and then up so that'll be another thing to clean uh, this gear will, should come off all right not the easiest actually that I'll, I'll clean the rest of that stuff now at the bottom that gear and these wheels I'm gonna cl I'm just gonna drop the whole thing in a pot of fluid and clean it um, so it's just to get the, the pot main deposits out now what we have to do though is this we'll start at the back that's that one and I'm trying not to bend anything here I'm also trying to catch it so I don't flick off this one comes off that will we'll give that a bit of a clean and the same at the front just try not to bend anything now be careful because this back cover here wants to uh, come off now now I've got a silver pen okay what I'm going to do is just identify the top and that corner and be careful not to like lose it when you degrease it it shouldn't matter too much but the thing that does matter and this is important are these magnets oh gosh are they ever um, I was screwing around with one of these for hours changing the magnet orientation to get it right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that so I'm not marking the lines on this part of the casing I'm just gonna remember that the back side of the casing is where these lines are gonna be um, so the, the armature will come out of the motor so what well, well, the whole thing will come out of the motor will so we'll take that out now okay uh, be very careful with this you don't want to screw you don't want to scratch those windings at all the reason I've taken it out is so that I can just degrease the gear on the motor and also this back piece here because there's a lot of carbon build up on that so I'll come back to the back to that um, but this bit here now unless it really needs cleaning just leave it alone you just got to remember how it goes back in that cassette if you like well this cassette goes back in the hole so just you've got to just mark it it'll save you so much time now I'm looking around this and I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of oil or anything um, but again oil is very bad for motors and actually yeah I can see some on the magnets so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to one side but what I'll do is I won't dunk this in fluid I will wipe it all clean individually but put, put it back exactly as I found it and it'll go back in there exactly as I found it because if you get one of these magnets the wrong way round it will give you a bad day so I'm going to put that somewhere extra safe um, and in there there's oil and stuff so I am left with now this whole thing is going to be dunked way up this whole thing with me remembering there that that's the mark now you can use this video to remember where your marks are going but I've just scored it so if that pen comes off now I've still got the score mark all this whole thing this whole thing is getting degreased now so uh, you might want to just be careful of these traction tires so uh, you could take them off I think that's what I'm going to attempt to do be very careful you don't break them though I don't know where you'd get spares from uh, the reason I've taken them off is so that the chemicals that you clean with don't mess them up so I'm going to be using IPA isopropyl alcohol and uh, I don't know what it would do to the rubber so instead of me finding out the hard way I'm just going to take them off and they all seem to be you know not, not bad condition there I'm sure you can buy these somewhere I don't know where I've never I, to be honest with you I just run it without them but the tires the way I run trains is different to most people so and to be honest it's probably not going to get run that much because it's not my favorite <laughs> right if you, if you look down on these wheels you'll see that the ones that are meant to have traction tires have got a, a recess for the tire to stay in uh, and the, the one at the front there does not 
So if you're running no traction tires, it would just, to be honest with you, it would just slide around uh, with traction tires. It'll pull about 28 coaches. Uh, so we'll do, I'll clean all these bits up. Like I say, I'm going to use IPA, isopropyl alcohol, uh, and we'll be back. Okay, so I've cleaned various things. I'm going to show you some more stuff though in a minute. We're going to do the motor next. Now I've got some um, Q-tips earbud things. I've got some IPA alcohol on the end of now the Q-tip and I'm just going to clean off the deposits on this motor and you can see how quickly that becomes a motor again. Now the reason I'm not dunking this in a pile of IPA is because it could potentially uh, remove the enamel from the coppered wire and we do not want that, otherwise we'll have a dead motor. So, you know, just, just trying to work out all the dirt from all the gaps. Now, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's more than it's more than better than what it was before. And that's as far as I would take that. Um on this side, uh what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a bit of a wipe, but nothing too generous here. I mean You'll see, if you get a con, uh, a cocktail stick, you can probably just get the bits of dirt out from in between the teeth. That'd be a better way of doing this. you just got to be careful of these wires throughout the whole thing. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes you'll get a bit of grit or something stuck in the teeth. Now, to me, that's good enough to go back in. Uh, and generally speaking, this whole loco is actually in pretty good nick. Um, the reason it's running so bad I think um, it could be a bit of grit was in one of the teeth of the gears uh, not helping it move smoothly um, that's fairly common um, but it's mainly actually those uh, now you'll probably be surprised to know this isn't the first one that I've fixed uh, I'm going to get some 2000 wet and dry again. Now, on these, I'm I'm not worried about this top piece because we're going to be soldering a wire to it. What I am interested in though is um this bit, this bit, and this bit are where the power comes from the wheels and gets transferred from a rotating part to a static part. And so you want it to be clean in these parts. Now I've degreased it, so now there's no grease or or bits of track involved. But what I'm what I'm going to be doing here is I'm sanding those areas. Okay, you see how much better. It's almost like you're getting the tarnish off the uh, the brass. I'm not trying to go mad with it. It's just it's one of those things I think that helps. Now I'm doing this side, I'll do the other side of this contact. Now, I'm not going mad on this, you could do, I mean you could go hell for leather but I would avoid using a polish to polish these up because you're inherently adding a layer of polish as well. You know like brass off or something like that, it wouldn't necessarily work terribly great. But I'm trying to focus around the pieces where the wheel will make contact with these. So that's that's a lot better than it was anyway. I'm just rolling it. You just want those areas quite clean. Um, and even though it's been degreased, it, the IPA won't get the tarnish off the brass. That's That's the best way I can explain it. Whereas this definitely does. And this probably then translates more into how it was brand new. I do. Uh, so let's take a tarnished wheel. These are tarnished. Um, and again, I'm going to get some fresh 2000 grit. Just tearing off little squares, I'll fold it in half, and then I'm using this, this folded edge around the wheel like that 
and I'm just trying to get fresh metal back out. <laughs> Because to me, looking at this loco, it really is quite dependent on its front bogey picking up the left hand and right hand track. You see this bit here. This is where that pickup would go into and actually get its power from. So you just want to make sure there's no nasties in there. No, no build up of anything in there. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to do the rest of these wheels. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm not doing any sanding motion like this. I'm going with effectively the movement of the wheel, what it would do on the track. So, it doesn't look like I've really done anything, but I know I have because the um, troubled spots are now gone. There was, a, there was some stuff on there that was that the IPA just wasn't removing. So I'll carry on doing this. Once I've done this, we'll start putting it back together. Uh, my, I think we're at a point where we can start putting this thing back together. Now I'm pretty anxious about whole handling this, so I want to get this back in the loco. <laughs> so we're going to start on the rear bogey. I'm literally putting this back in as it came out. I have wiped the bits individually, um, so there's no oil on those now. But if you get one of these magnets turned 180 either way, wrong way round or whatnot, I, I, the last one I fixed, I, I thought, oh yeah, it'll be all right. I'll just go back together. However. Um, it came out, but then the problem with that was uh, <laughs> it fell apart and uh, the magnets just swapped around and all sorts of stuff. So just if the motor's working when you're taking it apart, somehow identify which way, which part, part goes with what. Uh, so the next thing to do, we've got our magnets in. That's good. Uh, next thing's going to be the motor. Uh, grease and oils and things I will explain later. We are going to put this together dry for the time being. And... You've got just just take your time. I mean, the magnet's trying to grab the motor as I'm putting it in. I'm trying to get it so that it's now sat in the the bush that the shaft is in. It's, it's sat in there now, but it's it's you know stuck to the motor until we get the back cap on, which is this one, and we've still got a silver mark on there, which I know is up this way around. So get the back of the, sh the the back of the motor, the shaft lined up with the hole, and it should go together. I'm holding those two together. Really, when you're pulling these apart, the, th the important thing to remember is how the magnets go inside the motor and just, you know, take it apart, clean it up. It doesn't really matter then. So, that's those two clips on. These two clips are basically holding the motor together. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just get this gear on. This this isn't the best way of doing it. This is the way I'm doing it. Being careful not to screw the motor up. Get the thing on the shaft. Give it a little turn. And it's it's engaged again. Okay, so. I'm going to hold this like this. I've got the long one here and the short one over there. Okay, so it's going to go on like this. So with that little one over there, I'm going to push it on and down. Don't worry about the big one because we'll, that should just lift up now. Okay, so this took me a while to not screw up the springs. Um, yeah, if you turn this then 180, you do exactly the same. So you, it's the little one down there. It's this little one that's important. Okay. And I'll show you something else that I think, I believe, helps with these locos. So I'm going to solder these on. I'll show you what I'll do. The reason I'm doing this is just this is how I'm going to do it. I think it's going to work better because it, to me that looks like it's hovering between plastic and metal, which isn't cool. But then it doesn't really have to be because the actual spring itself is springing apart upon the um, these pieces here. But I will just put a dot of solder on, on there. So that's it. Um, now I've done that for a reason, so 
the end of this can spring around. Also, I know it's the springs actually basically wound up and on, under tension on these two pivoting points, but I, I just like the idea of me doing that. So I've done that. You don't have to do that. Um, that's just what I'm doing. Now the next thing to do, I've got these brushes. So I'm just gonna put them in. It doesn't particularly matter which way around you put them in. Uh, it depends how much wear you've got. If, if, I, if you can see there, you see that little dot on the top of that brush there? That's been created because this little guy here has been on top of it. When the motor goes round, those brushes move slightly and, and what that this little arm's been doing has been chattering on the top and probably arcing. So that's why that's there. So if you want to put them back in the way you got them out, just have a quick look and you'll see there's like almost like a pin prick in the middle of, of them. Uh, the bit that goes towards the motor itself will be completely flat. And these are in pretty good shape. Okay, so I think, um, you know, obviously how it's just soldering them on, I think I'm at the point now where we can put this back in the chassis. So I'll grab my traction tires and it's the two rear most, or it's the two axles with the gears, isn't it? Um, I'm putting these back on. Take your time. You don't really want. You don't really want to cut these with tweezers. You're probably better using a cocktail stick. I might try that in a minute. Uh, so this is now going to go in the chassis. This is the back end. Um, you know, we've got the front bogies left to do. So I'm putting that in there. There we go. Uh, so you can see how the back end is. Us. This overhangs, and then we've got our bogey here that will go over the whole lot. Just screw that on. Okay. So our rear bogey is in. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the wires just yet. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, let's draw attention to the forward bogey. So I'm putting the rear and the chassis to one side. So then, uh, what you do is you put your spring on the pickup and then you go and put your pickup in the bogey because then that will allow the pickup to be spring loaded against the axles. Just take note of the insulator. Uh, it's on the upper side here. You see it there, the little black bit? There isn't one down there. Make sure, although it probably really doesn't matter, uh, that all your wheels are facing the right way. This will help you out later. Hopefully, maybe. It's just good practice, guys. I, I do that. I, I make sure it's all on the same side. And it will be a bit of an arse. And I'll just show you in a second what I have done. Now that I've got the rear one in, you can see there how it goes into those recesses behind the wheels. Okay, it should do that all the way along. And then the last one, just like that. Okay, and it's sprung loaded. So I'm just literally gonna, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is look back at the video to see where this retaining cap, the way it goes round. Uh, I'm pretty sure the two little nub bits go this end, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to have a look at the video and then I'll show you the way it's meant to go. Okay, so the beauty of videoing is I know that the two indents, dink, dink, go towards the coupling. And there we go. So I'm just going to get one screw there for the front. That's that. Those wheel, those screws either end. Um, I've done them up till they stop, not till they're super tight. The next thing is that is going in, and then we'll put our screw on, and then all, all that's left is to put to put these wires back on. Now, because I've had that weird, what well, that thing is, I took off the motor, that electrical thing. That's a noise suppressing capacitor. You can absolutely leave that on your motors. That is fine. Um, I'm not going to have that on my motor. 
because that's how I roll. You want this bogey to move freely. You want it to kind of seesaw, and then you want it to, you know, under its own weight fall. Okay, that's a good way of doing it. You don't want it dead loose. You don't want it dead tight. Although to be fair, you could have it a bit looser than tight. Um, so, what's next then? Well, uh, wires. I do believe. Now the idea is, um, we go from one of the pickups, and we go all the way to one of these, and we go from the other pickup, and we go to one of these. Okay, so. So, just gonna put some solder on the end of these on the end of these wires, and this is tinning. So I'll first pick up there. Our first pick up is on. Now, if you wanted to put one of these locos on DCC. Um, these would be a left hand and right hand rail, and then that would just be your motor and your motor. So it's, it's pretty, pr there's loads of space in this. Um, you could put a sound decoder, a plasma TV, bloody, I don't know, cinema, full on cinema inside there. There's loads of space. <laughs> like you could, you could go full on Hornby TTS with no modifications and probably put a hi-fi system in there for the sound. There's just, there's oodles of space. So. I can see the appeal to this loco if you wanted to know one only one loco on your layout that's not with other scale trains um, and you wanted a sound loco you could totally do that with this you could almost almost I don't think you can but you could almost use the standard Hornby speaker in here I reckon uh, I have no intention of putting this on sound I can't find a class 55 um, sound chip by Hornby and if I did that would probably go in one of my Graham Farish logos but I can't find one so if you do find one don't tell me <laughs> it'll go in my Farish one if I did it so you can see I'm just adding the wires now <clears throat> so I, I don't worry too much about which wire goes where because at the end of the day it's 50-50. I think at the beginning of the video um, the wire here on the right hand side went to that contact. If I actually wired it to this one it wouldn't matter, it was just in this case it wouldn't matter. All that would happen is the motor would go the wrong direction um, and actually if you put your loco back together or you find that it goes in the wrong direction all you have to do is uh, swap two wires around and you could either swap these two around, so put that one there and that one there, or you could swap these ones around, put that one there and put that one there, and job's done then. Okay, so before I miss it out completely, we put the wires on the motor and we're left with this piece here, okay? Um, it curves down and the curved down bit goes towards the motor, so it goes over the whole lot, like that, hopefully you saw that. And now, it slides in and the idea here is there's a little bit there that's just pushing it in so just make sure that is definitely on there now all this really does is make sure that this this gear doesn't lift off uh, and that's that bit so before we put the shell back on um, this isn't greased, and I'm going to show you that in a minute, it's quite important that you don't do certain bits. Uh, but let's take this back to the track and just see what it's doing slash not doing, because now's a good point whilst we've got the shell off, if there's anything that I've done stupid, and I probably have, I've probably missed something, then now's a good time to fix it. This bit I removed, do not worry about this, this is just a noise suppressing uh, capacitor. <coughs> God, what I mean? A noise suppressing capacitor, and this just goes between the poles of the motor. I don't want to put this on because that can, if you do go DCC, you can screw up the um, 
the the running of the loco and it adds a lot of question marks as to why it's running weirdly so i'm not going to add it it's not needed with the controller i've got so we'll take it over to the track now and we'll see what it's doing okay so we're back at the track uh let's see what we get Okay. Well, she's a lot better. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you where, where I oil it. Right, literally whilst we're here, I've got one of these oil droppers. To be honest with you, it could be vegetable oil. It'll probably still work. It's got the consistency of it. Now, what I wanted to show you was I'm going to put a drop of oil on the motor shaft here. Not loads, uh, just enough. And then I'm going to do some on the gear. And teeth in there and then on that shaft not a lot now this is the one we got to be careful I am going to put a smidgen in there like next to nothing I've just used the extra that was on the end of the shaft um, I'm apprehensive to put any on the axles of the wheels here because that might just give me problems although I think I'm gonna go I've just contradict what I say all the time basically oil shouldn't get onto the pickups so that's it that's all I'm putting on oil wise should be a day and night difference once it's once it's worked its way around it sounds smoother already and you know this isn't this hasn't this hasn't got to stay alive this is just clean is it going to struggle? Yeah, probably, because there's only three axles actually getting power and they're all on the front. It's fast, but it hasn't stopped yet. And it will, it will go slow if I want it to. Slow enough to like look like a cool crawl. So, um, yeah, I might as well just show you the shell now, hadn't I? And it is just a case of putting the shell on. So it should, it should go on quite easily. If it's struggling to go on and something's holding it off and, uh, you know, that's better. That's on there. That feels like it wants to live there now. Okay guys, um, so I'm going to have a play for five minutes. Uh, I won't show you that. I think next, I think we're going to call it a day. Um, I'll just show, it, I'll show you it, its pulling capacity really. Um, and uh, we'll call it that. So I'll leave you with a bit of running. Um, what you really want to do, what you really want to do is run it at moderate speed in either direction for something like 15 20 minutes uh, not max chat just like maybe three quarters of throttle depends on what your loco is just you don't, you don't want to go in stupidly fast but you don't want it going too slow so it needs a, enough of a bit of a speed to sort of wear in so yeah i'm gonna have a bit of play you ain't gonna see that i think next you're gonna just see it pulling loads of coaches so all right guys i'll call it there thanks for watching and enjoy the next bit